Welcome to the Startup Pregnant Podcast, where we talk to creative leaders about what it means to be an entrepreneur and a parent. I'm your host, Sarah K. Peck. Hey, everyone. I wanted to tell you about a contest we are running at Startup Pregnant. So we are doing a series, this 10 Core Values series. And for each mini episode, every day over the next two weeks, we are having a contest where you can win lots of amazing prizes. The prizes include one-on-one coaching to business books by amazing women authors to more. There's lots of fabulous goodies. The way you play is like this. At the end of each of these episodes, there is a reflection question for you to think about. So listen to the 10-minute episode and then answer the question. Go pop over to our blog at startuppregnant.com and write your answer to the question. And every time you post a comment, you get another chance to win. So the contest is open November 13th through November 30th, 2017. So I hope you enjoy. Take a listen to this episode and then go leave a comment on our blog to play in the contest. Welcome back to the sixth episode in our series, our 10 by 10 of the Startup Pregnant Podcast. We are doing a series of the 10 core values of the Startup Pregnant philosophy, and this is number six. So if you want to take a listen to the other ones, head on back in your browser, but otherwise jump right in with number six today. The Startup Pregnant core value number six is this. What work looks like today is broken. Work is broken. So. What does that mean? First, let's talk a little bit about why work is broken. And then we're going to talk about what does a new future of work actually look like? I think there is so much overwhelming evidence that work today is broken in so many ways. About 100 years ago is when the start of this current version of work came to be. And the idea that we work in offices, the idea that we work from nine to five, the idea that we're continuously productive during the day at equal measures, and the idea that creative work can be corralled and enforced and produced in a way that's tangible and measurable and discreet is just so convoluted and so strange. And we're seeing the the results of a broken workforce in uh, the amount that people are dropping out of work, the amount of unhappiness there is with the way that work looks, the amount of distrust that there is. And so we take it as as a principle, as a given, that what work looks like today is broken. And if you want to learn more about this, you can go back to one of our first episodes with Annie Dean, who is the co-founder of Work WERK who pioneers a whole set, a whole matrix of different options for how people can work. And work is especially broken for women because the working world was designed without women in it. So of course, it makes sense that if women are trying to go into a system that was designed without them in mind, well, maybe it's not quite the right fit. And then when we bring parenting into it, and we try to make all of these things stuff together, and somehow, if it's not working, it's your fault is the result. Well, we don't we don't buy it and we don't believe it. So in our work at Startup Pregnant, one of the things we are examining is number one, why is work so broken? And number two, what does it look like if we envision a new world of work, a new future of work? Some of this comes from my own personal experience with work, um, which I'll share just briefly now, but I'll get into on other episodes. But one of the things I did when I joined the startup that I worked with in New York City one month is when I interviewed with them in the first place, I asked a tremendous amount of questions about their work culture, their environment, how often people had to be in the office, and how many hours. And I ended up negotiating a work arrangement where I worked four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I did not work on Wednesdays. And the reason for so was because I, for the first time in in my life, really was honest about how much I needed to write and do yoga as a means of being a creative person. Like my work would get better if I could do these things. I hadn't ever heard anybody doing this before in many ways. And so it was really scary to bring this up and to do But I ended up getting hired for a full-time position working four days per week. And on Wednesdays, I had to tell the team that I reported to and the teams that reported to me that I wouldn't be available on Wednesdays. I would not be answering email. I would not be doing work as work looked like. And I would be back on Thursday morning. At first, there were some, some challenges in figuring out, well, how do we schedule meetings? 
And I'll admit a little bit of that um, kind of female guilt that sometimes happens, where it's like, oh, everybody has to change their schedules to accommodate me. I'm so in the way. That must be really, that must be challenging. Sarah, don't make a, a fuss. Don't make trouble. But what ended up happening was really fascinating because I found that as time went on, we started to adapt and adopt this policy of no meeting Wednesdays. And people began to save Wednesdays to have time for themselves to be able to get a lot of work done. Our engineers knew that there wouldn't be the overhead of meetings. There were a lot fewer emails to be done. And all of a sudden, there was time in between checking in at the beginning of the week and collaborating to sit down and put your headphones on and get into the space of having to figure out a puzzle or a project or do the design work or do the engineering work. And for the people who weren't on the maker side of things, people who are on the manager side of things like the the CEO, Matan, he ended up stacking all of his meetings on that day, the external meetings, the PR meeting, the press meeting, the getting to know people out on the town, the meetings with investors, all of the people who needed his FaceTime. And so he ended up having these, to me, I'm an introvert, so these are insane to me, but these insane days of like 10, 12, 15 meetings where he would just park himself at one spot for four breakfast meetings over coffee and then park himself at another spot for four meetings over lunch. And what happened was the team really responded to this constraint or the boundary that I put forward in our early agreements when I first started working at the company. And we baked into the way that work was that Wednesdays would be this special circumstance. And it was it was nerve-wracking and challenging. I felt a little bit like Brene Brown talks about in Braving the Wilderness because I was standing up for this thing that I needed that I hadn't seen done before. And I was putting myself out there and it felt like a huge risk because I was interviewing for this job and I said, well, golly, like it, that's fine, but I'm not going to be available on Wednesdays. And it turned out to be one of the best things I've ever done for my job. And now when I share it with other people, they sometimes bring that model to their own negotiations and their own work. It's something I believe really strongly in. I think, as Cal Newport says in his book, Deep Work, a lot of times we just don't have strong enough boundaries in our work culture and in our work design. The only boundaries we have are remnants from 100 years ago of this nine to five idea that work starts and stops. But in the middle, it's this messy messy pile of like Swiss cheesing your day up into meeting blocks. And there's no actual time to get the work and the thinking and the depth that you need in order to move the bigger ideas and processes forward. So this idea, we take it that what work looks like is pretty broken and that we need new visions and new ideas for how we can work. And further than that, Startup Pregnant believes that Mothers, new mothers especially, are a really interesting workforce and a really interesting place to start designing new ways of working because there's so much potential for people who want to work 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week or 25 hours a week. And they want to be able to work, say, from 5 to 9 p.m. Or, you know, they have two hours in the middle of the night because they're up all night, but they sleep when their baby sleeps during the day. Or they want to just get the work done during the nap time. And this is all rich with potential for disrupting the way that work looks. And if businesses would glean onto this idea that there are so many amazing, talented, brilliant women who are available to consult part-time, they might actually realize that they have this hugely flexible workforce if they can figure out a new system for adapting it. In the meantime, however, what I've learned is that women are not waiting around for businesses to get with it. As Kate Northrup said on one of our episodes, she was like, you know, we can wait for the government to fix things or we can just do it ourselves. What women are doing, motherhood is propelling so many people to entrepreneurship because they realize that they need to create a new version of work that fits the life that they have. And so we're seeing new types of freelancing and consulting and new lifestyle design, new work design, and it's phenomenal. I've I've had the chance to work with a two-woman team, a PR team out of Boston while we were at one month, and they fix their number of hours. They fix it based on the school schedules. They charge the same hourly rate. It's a flat fee, and they tell you, 
we have the relationships and we have the network. We know exactly what we're doing. And we don't work more hours than this. We only take this many clients. So when we first started to try to work with them, they actually had a wait list of six months because they weren't going to create more work and disrupt the life that they wanted to live. So this is such a fascinating question to us. And we start from the premise, the idea that what work looks like today is broken And then it gets interesting because we can start asking questions about what the new futures of work can look like and what we are doing to invent it. So my question for you, Startup Pregnant listeners, is what should work look like and what will it look like? And putting it more specifically, I don't think that the answer comes in one broad sweeping statement, but it comes in a 100,000 several hundred thousand, a million, several million women pioneering all of these different methodologies and crafting the world of work in their vision for what they want. So based on core value number one, which is in my experience, the question for you to reflect on is in your experience, what would work really well for you and the future of work that you want? So take that question and hop over to our blog at startuppregnant.com and leave a note with what your future will look like and read through the comments and look at other people's responses. And remember that when we use that first principle of in my experience, if somebody writes something that doesn't work for you, great, it works for them and it doesn't work for you. Awesome. But write about your experience and what works for you and what dreams you have for a new world of work. Startuppregnant.com is where we're hosting the conversation and you can find all of the show notes and links to our blog in this episode on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play, wherever you listen to podcasts. Can't wait to read what you've written. And as always, hit subscribe, leave a review, and I'll see you on the next episode. 